Hello everyone, um, this is Dr. Lahari from the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology. Uh, today's class is on digital radiology. So I'm going to talk about uh, digital radiology in dentistry specifically. The learning outcomes would be to compare digital radiography to conventional radiography, explain in brief digital uh, detector characteristics and uh, to name three types of digital sensors used in dental radiography, explain the principle and applications of digital subtraction radiography, and point out five common problems in digital imaging technique. Digital imaging has revolutionized radiology. Uh, this is just a, a, um, a funny cartoon that I have picked up from the internet which says that your x-ray shows a broken rib but we fixed it with Photoshop. So uh, there is so much that you could do with digital imaging that um, you know generally in, in, uh, in radiology there are jokes that are cracked about you know actually fixing stuff with photoshopping but it doesn't really happen uh, usually. Right, when we're talking about digital radiography, it's per obvious that I would like to compare it to film-based photography versus digital photography. Now, we've seen this revolution happen really fast. And in fact, um, digital cameras such as these are absolutely out and nobody uses them anymore. And we've all moved on to phones. Um, but with, with the radiology, you, you still have the digital or film-based um, radiology still happening. Now, why am I comparing photography to uh, radio radiography? Or the reason is uh, the principle behind taking an image is nearly the same, just that in radiographs, we use x-rays as a source of uh, um, the, the source of energy as well as in photographs you use visible light. So when you're talking about film-based or conventional uh, radiology versus digital radiology, the primary difference is the image receptor. Now what we mean by image receptor is the film that we use to capture the image or a digital sensor which is used to capture the image. Now, essentially, the image looks very similar, either whether it's film-based or uh, uh, digital uh, radiology. You see the same image um, of almost similar uh, clarity and resolution. It's just that the film-based image, you have a film which you can hold in your hand, whereas in digital radiology, you're looking at it, looking at it on the computer screen. So let me remind uh, you all, dear students, that you still need x-rays which need to expose the uh, film or the sensor in order to capture the image. Right, so these are, uh, this is how a digital sensor works. You uh, have it connected uh, using a USB to a device which transmits the images onto the computer. So like I told you, you still need um, x-rays to actually uh, you know cast the image onto your sensor and uh, you, you need to place the sensor inside the patient's mouth that's why there are pictures showing you that it is waterproof um, essentially because there's saliva in the oral cavity but nevertheless we use barrier protection so that the uh, sensor doesn't get contaminated at this point I just want to introduce some terminology to you number one is pixel Digital images are made from a pattern of dots called pixels, nothing but picture elements. Now, each digital image consists of a large collection of individual pixels organized in a matrix of rows and columns. So when you put all of these tiny patterns of dots together, you get a large image. Now, this is how the image looks like. Now, for example, this is nothing but pattern of white and black dots or boxes, tiny boxes. But when you look at it from a distance, you can see that it looks like the face of a cat or, or, or a lion. So that's what we're trying to tell you. So the, all these little tiny picture elements are called pixels. So multiple pixels together uh, make up a digital image. Voxel, on the other hand, is a volumetric pixel. So it has a volume element to it and represents a value on a regular grid in three dimensions. So uh, here you can see that this uh, 
uh, for example image of this um, um, a teapot can be is made up of tiny blocks like Lego and this is what we uh, call as a voxel so when you're looking at three-dimensional imaging uh, the term pixel is replaced by voxel uh, coming to the differences between conventional and uh, film-based or analog, it's also called as analog, versus the digital imaging, the primary differences would be, first of all, chemical processing is eliminated. So you don't have these hazardous wastes that you need to look at how to dispose of. You don't have the fixer and the developer anymore. And uh, relatively, you have uh, processing time is, uh, is cut off. So it's faster. The images can be electronically transferred to other healthcare providers, which is a huge disadvantage. You wouldn't have to worry about carrying films physically or duplicating the films, which is a thing of the past. All you do now is just email the uh, image to uh, the next uh, healthcare provider. It requires less radiation, that's for a fact, because we've already read about this in radiation safety, that digital imaging requires 50% lesser radiation exposure in comparison to conventional radiology. The uh, images can be stored indefinitely, that is if you have a good data storage system, you can definitely store them for a long period of time, you wouldn't have to worry about images getting deteriorated, unlike films, which again, if you store them in your archive, you really need to uh, handle them carefully and they could be subjected to damage if they are not processed well enough or if they've not been maintained well enough. Uh, last but not least, modifications to the image can be made in digital imaging. Uh, you have the computer software, which comes with every uh, digital uh, sensory sensor and uh, it allows you to make minor modifications not photoshopping of course but just minor modifications like uh, uh, brightness or the um, you know sharpness of the image to a certain extent which can help you enhance and improve diagnostic uh, ability so there are various receptors available uh, in the market these days for use as digital uh, radiology dental sensors. They are broadly divided into solid state technology and photostimulable phosphor technology, also called as PSP. Now the detectors or sensors which are solid state can either be charged coupled devices, uh, complementary metal oxide semiconductors or flat panel detectors. Now, among these, the CCD, CMOS, and PSP are um, more popular in the market. <clears throat> this is how some of the sensors available in the market look like. You have either wireless sensors or wire sensors. Now, the wireless sensors are like a small block of plastic. It can be quite uh, tricky because you wouldn't want to, your patient to swallow it or choke on it. So um, a wired um, solid state sensor is far more popular. Now these sensors can be directly connected to the computer or you even have tiny devices or with screen devices on which you can see the image directly. But again, let me remind you, you still need to expose the sensor to radiation. It doesn't come out magically on its own. The digital sensor placement inside the mouth can either be done by hand, uh, where you ask the patient to hold the film in his or her mouth, or you can you get these universal uh, dense ply um, sensor holders, which we have in our clinic as well, or even the ones by um, Cabo, which can be, you know, help aid in uh, uh, the uh, beam angulation as well as holding the sensor in place in the mouth. So these are really helpful and see that the sensor and all types of sensors, all brands of sensors can fit into this uh, holder and that's the reason why it's called as a universal sensor holder. Now when we're talking about PSP or photostimulable technology, phosphor technology, slightly different technology. Now this is actually available in various sizes unlike the sensor that I showed you previously which generally comes only in one or two sizes. This come in a variety of about three to four sizes where they are very similar to the sizes that you are familiar with the dental film. Uh, zero, one, two, three, zero is uh, 
child, uh, one is anterior, two is posteriors or uh, the standard film, and three is a longer film, which is for bite wings. So uh, the advantages with PSP is that it's more flexible and it's very thin, similar to film. So it feels very much like the plastic of the film and can go in and uh, uh, into the contours of the oral cavity and fit in well. Uh, it comes along with a scanner though, since I told you the technology is different slightly and you need to remove this film and uh, this um, PSP imaging plate or sensor and after it's exposed to x-ray radiation, take off the barrier envelope, throw the envelope and put the um, sensor, it has to go through this laser scanner and you, the sensor comes out through this place, it can be reused and you get the image in within 10 seconds on your screen. So the technology is slightly different in the PSP um, photostimulable phosphor technology. So if you were to compare both the dig types of digital sensors which are commonly available in the market, a CMOS sensor would be slightly um, thicker and uh, more rigid in comparison to a PSP plate which is thinner, film-like and more flexible. But nevertheless, both of them are very popular, have their own advantages and uh, are um, easily um, accepted by patients. So if you were to look at it from the inside, now if the sensor, uh, for example, a CMOS or a CCD sensor would have multiple layers to it. It would have a back hosing or, or, and the cable, an electronic substrate, a imaging chip, fiber optic face, a scintillating screen and a front housing. And then that's where the x-rays actually um, strike the sensor. Whereas in case of a, C, a PSP sensor, you would have again a front layer, a phosphor layer, reflective layer, electroconductive layer, a polyester base, light shielding, and a back protective layer. So, you know, this, all of this is how the sensor looks from inside. This is not something which you really need to know, but it's just for those who are interested as to what actually makes up a sensor. Now, when it comes to PSP, the technology can be very um, advanced and you have uh, uh, multiple phases how the image is formed. First of all, the plate is prepared, it gets exposed to radiation and then it has to go into the scanner, it gets processed and finally you see an image. So uh, that's how the image is formed. So again, like I told you, as a student, you wouldn't really need to know how all of this works in detail. It's just for you to have an idea. So again, we've come back to the topic of what is actually the difference between film-based and digital radiology. So I've tried to put this up from your uh, White and Farrow textbook and uh, quite uh, comprehensively written out over here. Number one, film-based radiology is single use. You use one film at one time. Whereas in comparison, a digital sensor is reusable multiple times. For example, the PSP plate can be used a thousand or two thousand times um, it can be used. Reason being it has this plastic barrier and envelope which you can reuse, uh, sorry, which you use and dispose of and uh, for every patient you can change it. A film can be damaged through bending to accommodate patient anatomy. The same thing can happen with sensors also. You can't really bend the sensor too much. It would cause permanent damage. And uh, some of the sensors, like I so told you, the CMOS are uh, quite rigid and uh, you can't really contour it into the oral cavity as well as you can contour a film. Um, in the film, the entire area of the film is the imaging area. Whereas the sensor is slightly smaller uh, in comparison to the film, the image area, but by about a few millimeters. When you're not looking at film projected backwards, you get something called as a tire track appearance on the film. There's an embossed pattern due to the lead foil. And you can really make out that you've done made a mistake. With a CMOS sensor, you cannot make that mistake because you have the wire on the other side. Whereas with the PSP sensor, yes, you could make that mistake and it cannot be distinguished when projected backwards and that's a major drawback there. So you need to be very clever. Of course, there are indicators. If you follow the instructions, you, there are less li likely chances that you would make that mistake. But if you did, you can easily get confused from the left to the right quadrant. 
Infection control is better, they say, with film-based radiology because you're using one film and you're disposing of the packet. But nowadays, with the sensors also, uh, the uh, infection control is, is good. Sensors cannot be autoclaved though, but uh, you could use mild disinfectant agents. But the best would be to use a disposable sleeve which covers the entire sensor. And that way you would uh, protect it from saliva as well as um, um, it's easier to maintain hygiene. Lastly, there is chemical processing in film-based radiology, which is something which is a major part of uh, processing that you cannot do without it. Whereas in digital radiology, there is no chemical processing, totally eliminated. And that way it's more uh, environment friendly as well. And the most important difference is there is reduced radiation dose, 50% lesser in comparison to film-based radiography for the same type of radiograph. <clears throat> we are doing a little more detailed comparison of the same thing again. When you're looking at receptor prepare, preparation, in a film there's nothing to prepare. In a digital radiology setup, you really need to switch on your computer, open up the software and keep it ready for your image to be received. In receptor placement, you have film holding devices, whereas uh, in digital sensors, also there are specialized holders. For the PSP, you can still use the same uh, film holding device, which you use for film because it's as thin and as uh, uh, very similar to a film. When it comes to exposure, it's very simple. Um, you just uh, make the patient sit down, put the film inside the old cavity, set the x-ray machine and expose the patient. In digital setting, also similar, but your computer must be activated before the exposure. Otherwise, you're not going to get an exposure <clears throat> or you're not going to get an image rather. Display preparation, you use the displays in the form of film mounts, you need a, a digital, you need an x-ray viewer, you need ambient light, so you, um, you know, or dim lighting, so you would want to see your images on a film mount. Um, whereas in case of a digital image display, it's on your TV screen or your computer screen, so it's a lot more convenient and you can set the darkness or the brightness based on your uh, screen and your viewing um, likability. Uh, that's what I just now said. So the display is subdued light and in the view box, whereas on a digital image, it's on the display screen. Image duplication, uh, there is a technique for duplication. You get duplicating films. The quality is not really very good. Uh, you might rather want to expose the patient all over again. Whereas in a digital image, you can make multiple copies of your image without any deterioration or any change to the quality of the image. The time for image acquisition for a film-based radiograph is more because it has to be exposed and processed, dried, and then only you can view the film. But the digital image for CCD and CMOS, it's virtually just 10 seconds. For PSP, you add another 10 seconds for the scanning process to happen. The cost of a film-based imaging is only for the chemical processing solutions and probably a dark manual uh, processing um, or a dark uh, pro uh, dark room you don't really need a dark room these days all you need is a manual processing box or an automatic processor but for a digital image uh, you need a computer you need software and you need the sensor itself so that is an initial investment but the returns are definitely good in the long term lastly the transmission may be difficult that means sending it from one place to another whereas in case of digital is really easy like i told you you just email the image or you, uh, you can make multiple copies of it. So there are certain disadvantages and problems with the digital uh, radiology. Number one, like I told you, is the initial expense for setup. <clears throat> but these days it's not really viewed as an initial expense. It's viewed as an investment. Um, image receptors are susceptible to rough handling. So you wouldn't handle, you wouldn't want to be, uh, you know, dropping it or uh, bending it too much, it could get scratches or cracks or get and get damaged. So that way the sensor becomes uh, um, ineffective. You can't use the sensor anymore and you might have to replace it. Image noise also is uh, sometimes an issue when you have uh, either damages or scratches or um, other reasons where there is non-uniform density or there could be distorted images. There is technical skill required when it comes to digital imaging because you need somebody to handle the uh, computer and the software, which again is not really a disadvantage or a problem. It's more like, um, you know, a little bit of training. 
The CCD sensor can be bulky and sometimes patients might com complain of discomfort when you're trying to take a lower molar uh, radiograph and uh, placing the sensor inside the mouth. And if you really want to push it down to see and not to cut off the apices of the teeth, especially when you're doing um, uh, placement of the film or uh, placement of the sensor in cases where there's already a rubber dam present, it can be quite difficult with the clamp in place and trying to push the sensor into place. The PSP sensors images again cannot be distinguished when they're projected backwards. That's again something which can be overcome, not, not a major disadvantage, but uh, yes, yeah, something that needs to be taken care of. When it comes to infection control with digital intraoral sensors, barrier and envelopes are available. You, the routine barriering of the X-ray machine has to be done as well as sleeves can be used for all uh, the sensors. That way it protects the surface of the sensor as well and as well, uh, it can be reused uh, safely without uh, being uh, subjected to harsh chemicals for disinfection. And these barriers are definitely disposable. Now, digital imaging is not only for the intraoral imaging, even the panoramic, cephalometric, and CBCT are all types of digital imaging. Uh, in fact, for extraoral, moving on to digital imaging has happened more faster than it is with the film-based uh, intraoral periapical imaging. And uh, this is just a picture from our clinic, which shows you the uh, imaging which is done for the panoramic radiograph of, or patient positioning. So when it comes to detector characteristics or the sensor characteristics, they are very similar to that uh, the image that is uh, or the characteristics seen with a film-based image. You have contrast, which is the ability to distinguish between densities. A detector can capture a lot of densities. It can capture around 2 to the power of 8 to 2 to the power of 16 densities. But the human eye can only detect 60 gray levels only. So in spite of the fact that the digital sensor is displaying you a lot more, um, I don't know, the image can display you a lot more uh, variations in densities, uh, your eye can actually uh, capture and process only 60 of them. The resolution is the capacity to distinguish fine details and it's measured in line pairs. The eye can see up to six line pairs a millimeter. The intraoral film can show up to 20 line pairs uh, per millimeter resolution. And theoretically, the resolution of a digital sensor is 25 line pairs. So if you actually compare them, both the intraoral film and the digital sensor have equal resolution, which means that both of them can show you fine details uh, equally well. This is what I meant by resolution, is the ability to look at the image and uh, define the edge of the image. Next is detector latitude, which is the ability to capture a range of exposure. Digital films, a digital imaging is very similar to films and they can show you a wide range of uh, exposures. Uh, detector sensitivity or speed, the ability to respond to small amount of radiation is certainly much better with uh, detectors. The digital radiology uses lesser than 50% uh, lesser dose reduction when compared to films. Uh, we're talking about F-speed films and that's a major advantage because you're having less patient radiation exposure. Image enhancement is something which you can do um, with your digital images and that's virtually impossible with film-based radiology. Uh, you can adjust the brightness and contrast. You can sharpen the image or smoothen the surfaces of the uh, edges. You can do color enhancement. Now that is again only required if you for patient education or probably to uh, look at uh, uh, specific areas of interest. There are measurement tools available in the software which allow you to measure accurately the root canal length perhaps or the distance between the two root apex and the mandibular nerve. These are some areas where measurement tools can be used and also digital subtraction radiography. I'll talk about it in, in a while from now. So the software, this is how it appears. There are various types of software. Every sensor comes with own software. You have the software which can be used uh, for uh, periapical imaging as well as for panoramic imaging, or you could have separate panoramic imaging software and a separate uh, 
uh, you know, digital sensor, intraoral software. Again, like I told you, it helps you enhance the image and also helps in measurements and uh, ha helps in patient education as well. Digital subtraction radiography, these are images of a patient who has had, uh, just give me a moment. Yeah, these are two images taken uh, six months apart of the same area after uh, pre-bone grafting and post-bone grafting. And you will observe that there is an increase in the height of the bone, especially in the premolar area. You can see an angular bone defect and the bone defect seems to have improved over a six month period post-operatively. And this difference is very clearly visible on a subtracted image. So subtraction radiography showing a bone density gain on the mesial aspect of the mandibular first molar and mandibular first premolar. So these areas. So that's uh, what is the advantage of uh, subtracting radiography, subtraction radiography. So what it does is actually when two images of the same object are registered and the image intensities of the corresponding pixels is subtracted, a uniform difference image is produced. Changes between baseline and follow-up images show up as brighter areas, which is a gain in bone, for example, or darker areas, which is a loss in bone, for example. So the strength is even small changes can be seen. Are you able to actually tell if your treatment planning has worked? Uh, again, it comes with its own limitations. It has to be diagnostically useful um, and it, for it to be useful to the baseline image and the reprodu reproduced image should be very close uh, or similar in projection geometry and image intensity. Only then you'll be able to subtract one image from the other to understand what the difference between the two is. So it literally means that you must take the second image in the same angulation and the same projection same intensity, same computer settings like you did the first one, which again is not impossible, but you can do it. And then the computer and the software will detect what the bone gain or the bone loss has been. And that is called as digital subtraction radiography. Applications would be primarily in the field of uh, periodontology or implant placement, where you are actually doing a bone grafting or, and uh, trying to visualize whether there has been a change or no. Storage, we discussed this earlier, let me just tell you again, and storing digital images is an uh, excellent method of archiving and management systems exist. The software itself can act as an archive for you, where you can store multiple uh, images. So the image uh, <clears throat> size in the intraoral image can be about uh, 200 KB and an extra oral is much bigger than that. So when it comes to storage, um, you need you could have a backup system as is as, as a master server to store all your images if you're a very uh, large institution having a lot of volume of images, or you could have a separate storage inbuilt within your computer itself and a separate backup also. So you don't wouldn't want to lose any of your patient images. So software that is common between all. Um, Digital images is called as a DICOM software, which, which is the digital imaging and communications and medicine software that helps in image compression and uh, is, is prominently used in medical imaging. So, which brings us to the nearly the end of the lecture and, and we need to pose this question to ourselves, which is better, film or digital imaging? That's a very difficult answer and from a diagnostic point of view, there is no difference. Let me tell you, sometimes students think digital images has but much better. It's not the truth. Both images have got equal resolution and can show you details very well. The look and feel, feel of digital display is different from that of film viewing. If you are the conventional type who likes to hold a film in your hand, then probably you, you are still um, the kind who likes to, uh, you know, view digital or film uh, images. Whereas um, digital images have their own charm, they come with the software, which you might have to learn. They have a better environmental impact. You wouldn't have to um, worry about disposing chemicals of the right process. Cost factors also have to be taken into consideration. But all in all, uh, I bet the digital images are here to stay and that is the way forward. If you're looking at your own private setup, a dental uh, setup, definitely digital imaging is uh, the way forward and uh, film imaging can have its own setbacks. So it's important that we move ahead and digitize your radiology setup.
So uh, that brings me to the end of the lecture. I hope you've understood and taken out the important points from this uh, topic. Uh, feel free to contact me if you do have any more doubts. Thank you for now.